Hello everybody and welcome back to the DCAC channel where we solve lead code questions and just try to prepare for technical interviews and kind of learn programming and Python along the way. So today we're just going to pick another, pick another question. Um, I think I saw some uh, one that I actually liked by the name of it. Find common characters. Yeah, this one. Let's see what's the deal with it. So, given an array A of strings made only from lowercase letters, that's good to know, return a list of four characters that show up in all strings within the list, including duplicates. Hmm? Return a list of all characters that show up in all strings within the list. Okay, so we have a list of strings and we are returning only the strings that are that are, uh, of it, that are to be seen, to be found in all of those strings. For example, if a character occurs three times in all strings, but not four times, you need to inc you need to include that character three times in the final answer. You may return the answer in any order. So the second case here. The second sentence doesn't really uh, <laughs> follow what I understood from the first one. Let's try again. Return a list of all characters that show up in all strings within the list. A list of all characters that show up. Okay. For example, if a character occurs three times in all strings, you need to include that character three times. So basically, if we have a character that is found in all strings more than once, we also have to include it more than once. Okay, it's good to know. Let's see our examples. Bella, label, roller. So we have the E being there once, we have the L being there once, and again the L one more time. How can we break down a uh, problem like that? Again, a school. The C is found, the O, okay. Having characters found in all strings. Note, our array is between 1 and 100. The length of each uh, string is also between 1 and 100. And all of those strings are lowercase letters contain lowercase letters so what can we do let's start with a simple simple kind of like what would you do if you were a human so you have for example we have the word cool we have the word um, organ for example and then we have the word uh, in this case we would only have the O right uh, morning then for example you would also have something like water would have something like vase and then uh, mm -hmm, barber and another one with two repeating or like with more than one of the same character repeating would be let's copy something from here i guess this example okay so how do we handle this what would a human do i would basically start with looking at the first character in the first word and see if that character is any, in any of the other words and just because I know that if I am looking for a character from here and I shouldn't really worry about any characters that are not here because then it would mean that the character not here would not appear in our output right because it would it must appear here as well so in our algorithm we are basically taking what would be the um, you, you would you call that the lowest common denominator 
I guess if you if you have set theory, it would be um, the intersection of all the yeah that would be it right the intersection of all hmm now I'm thinking about interesting ways to do this like something like sorting algorithms for example can you even sort let's see if we can sort something like um, sorted and then we have an array that has a uh, H E L L O and I don't think that I have a solution with this right away but it's it presents a very interesting way and I think it did sort it right I, I guess in this case it was not really anything spectacular but yeah these are like the the alphabetical order yeah so what can we do about that for example if we have these like bella b l l a and, I'm, and in this case I just have a hunch I, and I, that's why I'm just trying to see label which is not spelled no it was spelled label okay um, and of course at an interview I wouldn't really try and kind of stall like this but maybe they give me a couple minutes to kind of think about it sometimes I've, I've heard that sometimes you you do get some time to think about stuff like that so it's kind of worth to see hmm. okay so it, it's kind of worth to actually try a couple of stuff um, in this case yeah I was expecting yes I do get these guys ordered but it's nothing like yeah they wouldn't really stand on the same positions or anything like that still not a bad idea but I think I'll just go with a kind of like manual approach like I said the the intersection between all the words is what you would normally do and you'd probably even start with the the string that has the lowest um, length the thing is I don't even think it's worth going over the whole array checking out the lengths and then starting with the one that has the, the lowest length but if we run into uh, runtime issues maybe we can implement something like that as well <coughs> but for now I think our approach would be just take the first string and let's just take it first string would be a zero now we know that for each character for a character in first string I'll even call it each character in first string um, we want to go over all the other all the other strings so basically for string in A and we start from 1 and for each hmm, now that would be some kind of an issue for example if we have here like a, a secondary issue would be we we check the B okay we see there is a B here but no not here so we don't really take that one we go to this one we see okay here there's one and here this one good now we can actually put E here right now what do we do with these ones 
I guess um, having things in no I'm not sure so getting one of those a person would say okay I have one L and I'm looking for one L and you would immediately see that there is a second L and you would basically go and get another one as well right that's why I'm assuming it makes sense to have them stacked next to one another but that would mean we are going to be sorting so I think I'll just leave it for now and just try out a more like greedy algorithm so <clears throat> I would go here and I would check and see that there is an L and I'll go to the other one and see okay there is another L I'll just type it in now I am going over a second L which means that I could have a counter and this counter would be like hmm 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 yeah um, we could have something that would keep frequencies for us right something like a dictionary for example um, how could we do this for example we could have a frequencies dictionary and we could also have something like um, occurrences uh, occurrences array so for example we are going to be still looping and when once we find a character we are going to put it into the um, for example, I'll just write it here. We're going to be putting, for example, frequencies. And that would be, for example, the character. And the character would, uh, hmm. let's see, if each character is not in a current seas we basically um, add that uh, this character and now this was our check to know basically uh, that, that that we don't have the entry in our dictionary uh, so in this case we would also say our dictionary uh, would contain basically would be one this would be the starting position for a new character that we know that, that has not occurred yet and it, it will be basically setting its uh, value default else uh, that would mean that the character it has already occurred we would basically say um, would have a temporary variable current frequency would be frequencies get uh, the character and frequencies the character would now be current frequencies plus one and actually I guess we, we could do it like this directly I'm not sure if that would work. I guess I'll, I'll just quickly try it. A would be our dictionary. And now we say A character equals one. 
print a and then we say a character equals a character plus one print a let's run it um unhashable oops i guess uh i had to do it like this I think that was the notation when you first not uh, initia initialize the dictionary, but otherwise you have to do it like this. Okay, never mind. So we, we see that it works. We only had to do it like this. So in this case, we know our frequency will get updated. If we are, for example, if we find the first one, we'll get a frequency of one. Now, if we go here, and we could always check if this one occurred if we know it never occurred we can basically go and just check for a any any uh, character in uh, the other strings for example the e we would uh, when we start our algorithm and we are at the e we know we can check the occurrences array we know there is now no, no uh, occurrence and if there was no occurrence, we can actually just go and check uh, if any of the other strings contains an E. If there was an occurrence, for example, in this case, we know the L was already there. What do we do? Um, we update the, we update the frequencies for this occurrence. All right, it will say two, and and actually, this could be right here. Okay. Okay. Um. So we get our frequencies, we get our occur occurrences updated at the very beginning. And now once we start looping, we know we either loop only once because our occurrence, we actually, we can, we can do this comparatively and uh, hmm. How do you, how would you search for more than one occurrence of a character inside a string? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can kind of loop through it, but you could probably do something like regex. And which is interesting, like something like regex could probably be uh, possible for even like the whole algorithm without thinking about anything else, maybe. Oh. Okay, let's let's um, just continue. We can start with a simple example first and then just build on top of that, right? This is the, um, the way you would literally program everything when it comes to work. You shouldn't really think about the whole problem, just split it. So we know that, um, for example, we don't have a, an occurrence, that means we search once. We can basically do our search uh, directly here. And uh, that would mean that we, we take this. Okay, let's just delete it from here for now. And uh, we would even have something like um, is care uh, care in all 
equals zero or basically false per default well, let's let's just uh, say goes true and for example now for each string if each of those cards that we're looking at is in the string uh, or basically not in the string we say care in all is actually false because our character was not found in some of those strings and okay and now at the end if our care in all is true basically we know that this character was found in all of them because not no none of them switched uh, this flag off we can have our say output equals an empty array and in this case we would append our character otherwise we, we wouldn't append it right this is our very simple approach of doing um, a single character occurrence lookup we can do something like we can we can basically get for example this and try it out because this would be the simple case and I think it should work without the complication of uh, checking for more than one character not sure if we have everything here uh, occurrences occurrences um, Currencies. Let's just quickly. I think that was all. It's just a typo. So we expected. It was expected to get all. We got also all. Our runtime looks a bit high. I'm not sure if we will get uh, good acceptance when it comes to. Mm, well, I guess it, it's not that high so what do we have left we know that we should base our search based on how many uh, frequencies for each occurrence uh, there are for example we we go over to a new to the next element or character and we see okay that there is more than one occurrence so we which that which means that we actually um for example, in this case, we are here. We don't need to, to append occurrences. We only need to increase frequencies. So once we've increased the frequencies, we actually need to see, for example, for each string, um uh, found occur so uh found occurrence equals zero and um we know that if we don't find the character in the string we can always well in this case we wouldn't do this we would basically do for character in string and now we are looking like uh, we're looking that for example if character if this character is equal to our character that we are looking for we are updating 
we are updating our pound of currencies and in the end we are looking at if our found a currency is greater or equal to frequency to the required frequency basically we want to see if for example this this word had at least two of those occurrences and um, yeah 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 that's that's the only thing that we we are looking for um, so we would know well in this case we would be looking for example for three of them and it would be well for three you wouldn't find anything but for, for example for two it would basically find two in the other ones right so basically you would get two of those outputs okay so that, that should work basically our incrementer would go high but we are only adding each uh, character that is found in the other ones in the other um, strings only once per iteration so for example if that was our first word we would find the currency one right and then at some point we'll look for a currency two and we will see that this one has a currency two this one has a currency two all fine we will add the second one for this one we would look for a currency three we wouldn't find it and here as well so we wouldn't really uh, add a third one only two um, I just wanted to see if my variables are the ones that are the ones that I was so the found currencies need to be higher like greater or equal so I, that means that here for example I could have had four and it should have worked with this comparison here okay and so yeah if though if this is the case we can basically append this character and this should be our uh, our algorithm I know it's kind of convoluted um, and of course this one is no longer necessary and yeah now I want to test uh, the, the, the way if that still were oh okay I guess double R no uh, something else I guess oh I see I had to have it well actually this one and this one yeah again spelling okay the first example we got right let's try our second example and I'm not sure if I want to leave it the way I had it for for our extended example or I want to leave it like pretty simple only to get one more L interesting um, oh I see no I don't so it was in occurrences we updated our frequency we know for example well we don't even update it right it's just two um there is something wrong with either fre the frequency comparison or the found currency compa comparison now we know that the found currency comparison should not be the problem quick
quickly debugging. So we are not dealing with this case. Uh, we know that <coughs> we have added the frequency once at the start, and of course we have appended this uh, as an occurrence. And in the second case, well, the first time we also add the L, right? Um, we add the L and then okay then we of course here for each time we find we find another one of those we update it plus one so in this case it would be two and I'm not sure why it found a second L afterwards. I, I have to print something, for example, let's print print me frequencies and also found a currency. This would be a pretty long print now, um, now that I think about it. Um, good. I'll just delete this one to shorten our print. So what do we have? We have two L's in each of those. Now that's weird. Um, One eternity later. Oh, now I get why. So I was uh, in the inner loop, which is uh, kind of dumb. I actually had to, yeah, uh, my idea was to loop through, of course, the strings by themselves and then escape and then check if, uh, well, actually, I, I still had to go and yeah okay so I still have to do this but not really I'm not going to be appending uh, I'm actually going to be doing this the other way around and uh, again we have this and we even have it here already this would be outside for in a moment so we basically have our care in all would be false. Uh, and what, what, what this does is, okay, we are looping. So we know we are in a character that is um, found more than once is basically this block. And then we say, okay, we, we update our frequency. So we know what, what type of frequencies we need to be searching for. We uh, go over and add all of those frequencies into the found frequency or a currency variable. And then we compare and we, we see if our found currency is at least as much as the frequencies for this particular uh, string that was like the next on the line. If that's not the case, we can update this guy here and we can even uh, break and for this one as well if we don't break at some point we are going to be outside of the loop because we have uh, um, yeah basically we we would have gone through all of the different strings nothing would have broken the the the, the loop and we can actually check if our how was it care in all is still true 
if that is the case then we can actually update our output and it is basically the same as here uh, this is the only thing that's different is basically substituted uh, with something that would also account for currencies and uh, now I think we should be if I didn't put any typos again to, for a currency we should have the expected result yes this accepted because they said uh, the answer may be returned in any order I guess they actually order them doesn't matter uh, for an empty we don't really think oh yeah we could still think about something like uh, well yeah let's try something that like a b c and then something like a a a these are both valid ones for one of them we should be getting zero output for the other one um, the single a all accepted now reformatting probably a good idea for example my suggestion would be to split this into a separate function that would be like check um, I would actually even put both of those things into a single function uh, the function would also have an additional parameter that would say uh, check for frequencies or frequent character something like that and then uh, I would actually put something like yeah uh, basically the algorithm itself would even uh, take for example the function itself would take this this number so it would know what to look for uh, if it doesn't get any of that parameters it would basically go and do only like this simple operation for checking let's submit it and uh, I don't know let's hope we we actually are fine with runtime and I guess we are although our program is not the, the fastest doesn't really matter we actually uh, solved it and yet again I find that uh, working with strings is kind of tedious <laughs> always too technical uh, than what you would think from the beginning like even something as simple as that like I think it comes to the, to the nature that strings consist of characters and you, you don't really think about them until you actually start uh, like um, slicing those strings into single characters working with within those bounds and then having to reference uh, stuff from the other ones and as you can see they all have different lengths and you always have to look through them or do some weird math uh, logic or like yeah th theory approaches uh, when handling them but yeah still fun uh, got to work with some like dictionaries and stuff like that uh, I definitely urge you to, to solve this question on your own I think you wouldn't really get the whole struggle until you uh, do it yourself and that was it from me Thank you so much for watching, uh, consider subscribing, liking this video, whatever. <laughs> See you guys next time.